and Safwan bin Asal uh, replied to his questions and then mentioned the conversation which took place with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in it he mentioned about the door of Tawbah which will be open until the end of times, until the sun rises from the west. Okay. Uh, thereafter, our second hadith by Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu an, and it is the story of the man who killed 99 people. Then he, dis he wanted to make Toba. He went to a person who told him that there's no Toba for him. Uh, Allah will never forgive him. So he killed that person. So he killed a hundred people. Then he found another, uh, he sought another scholar and he asked, how can he make Toba? And the person told him that you should make Hijrah, leave your old people, leave your, your town and go to a town where there are good people. And on the way, while he was halfway, he passed away. And the angels of punishment and the angels of mercy were debating on whether to take him straight to, to Jahannam or should he be uh, taken to Jannah. So at the end, it was said that measure the distance between the two and the place he is, he is closer to, then he will be from there. So this shows his intention to make Tawbah and his effort to leave the sin and at the end even though he did not do a single good deed but his Tawbah was accepted because of the effort which he made to leave the sin and he was forgiven. Okay, today's story is a story, a very long story, a famous story of a famous Sahabi Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu an. It is a story full of sacrifice. It shows the true devotion of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. It shows his love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his conviction and yaqeen uh, in Allah and in the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so we will read it part by part and translate as we go along. So it is narrated by Abdullah bin Ka'ab the son of Ka'ab radiallahu anhu. Okay. So an Abdullah ibn Ka'ab ibn Malik wa kana qa'idu Ka'ab radiallahu anhu min banihi hina amiyah. Qala sami'tu Ka'ab ibn Malik radiallahu anhu yuhaddithu bi hadithihi hina takhallafa an Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ghazwati Tabuk. Abdullah bin Ka'ab who served as the guide of Ka'ab bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, when he became blind, narrates that I heard Ka'ab bin Malik narrating the story of his remaining behind instead of joining the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he left for the battle of Tabuk. Okay, so firstly, this, the son is Abdullah, father is Ka'ab. The son is narrating the story of his father. Okay, and you'll see the details that is mentioned in this hadith that the father did not hold anything back from his children. Uh, sometimes as parents we don't want to show any weakness to our children, we don't tell them our faults and all of those things. He told everything, every single detail as you will see in the, in the coming hadith. So he says, and he was the guide of Ka'ab bin Malik when he became blind. So this gives us more information on the Sahabi Ka'ab bin Malik. Uh, he was an Ansari Sahabi. And uh, he became blind in his later life and his son was his guide. So it shows the devotion of the children, how they serve their parents. And he became the guide of his father when he was blind. Ka'b bin Malik an, was one of the poets, Sha'iru Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the poets who praised Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and were famous uh, for their praise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, then Ka'b bin Malik passed away during the Khilafah of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an. Okay, so the story is about Ka'b remaining behind 
during the Battle of Tabuk. The Battle of Tabuk was one of the last expeditions which Rasulullah went on with the Sahaba. Kiwai Tabuk, Tabuk is approximately 600 kilometers away from Medina. 600 kilometers in today's uh, measuring on the highway which goes straight that time. Go between the hills here and there, look for the best way to go. The distance could have been longer than that. 600 kilometers. This was the furthest and the greatest expedition which Rasulullah took on. It was also his last expedition. Okay, there was a certain amount of urgency in this in this expedition because it was against the Romans, the Byzantines, who were threatening the border on top there. So if that place had to go, then the route which they would take to Syria for the trading and all would be lost. So that it was very important strategically and also for the uh, sake of Islam. Uh, before that, uh, Rasulullah sent a messenger, a few people, and the, they were defeated by the Romans and they returned. So now Rasulullah is gathering a bigger force. He heard the news. When Rasulullah hears news, it's from Allah. So he got the information that the Romans were gathering and about to attack uh, near to Tabuk. So he gathered the Sahaba and they set out to Tabuk. Okay, so Ka'b bin Malik continues. He says, Qala Ka'bun. لم أتخلف عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في غزوة غزاها قط إلا في غزوة تبوك غير أني قد تخلفت في غزوة بدر ولم يعاتب أحد تخلف عنه إنما خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يريدون عير قريش حتى جمع الله بينهم وبين عدوهم على غير ميعاد وَلَقَدْ شَهِدْتُ مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَيْلَةَ الْعَقَبَةِ حِينَ تَوَاثَقْنَا عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ وَمَا أُحِبُّ أَنَّ لِي بِهَا مَشْهَدَ بَدْرٍ وَإِنْ كَانَتْ بَدْرٌ أَذْكَرَ فِي النَّاسِ مِنْهَا Ka'b bin Malik uh, says, he says, I accompanied the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم in every expedition which he undertook except the battle of Tabuk and the battle of Badr. So it shows a great Sahabi, he took part in every single battle besides Badr and the one he's talking about Tabuk. But he says, but as for Badr, nobody was blamed for remaining behind. It wasn't compulsory, it wasn't that they were preparing to attack the Quraysh at Badr. They weren't preparing an attack, a full war with the Quraysh. Uh, what happened at Badr, as for the Battle of Badr, nobody was blamed. Uh, the Muslims set out and they had in mind only to intercept the caravan of the Quraysh. So remember when the Muslims migrated, they left everything behind. Quraysh took everything which they left behind, their properties, their wealth. And uh, so as the Quraysh caravan used to pass, they would sometimes set out and get the Quraysh caravan and get some of their belongings back. So they were going out to intercept the caravan. The Quraysh got news of it, they prepared the army and when they met it became a, the first battle. Uh, so nobody was blamed for that. Those that it was optional, they said, okay, we're going to get the caravan of Quraysh. Not that everybody come, we are going compulsory, you must leave. Okay. So nobody was uh, blamed for, for missing better. But he says, in place of Badr, I had the honor of being with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the night of Aqaba when we pledged allegiance to Islam. And this was dearer to me than participating in Badr, although Badr was more well known among the people than the Laylatul Aqaba. So Laylatul Aqaba, what was Laylatul Aqaba? Uh, before the Hijrah, a group of of people from Medina, who later became known as Ansar, met the Prophet wasallam and pledged allegiance to him. So they accepted Islam and they pledged allegiance to him. 
Uh, so that is known as Laylatul Aqaba, which took place twice. Uh, and uh, he says, I was there at that meeting, Laylatul Aqaba. So that opened the doors for Hijrah and it opened the doors of many great things. So he says that I don't wish that I would get better in place of this Aqaba. Aqaba is more dearer to me than Badr. Although Badr is more well known to the people than Laylatul Aqaba. Okay. Now begins this, the part of the Tabuk. وَكَانَ مِنْ خَبَرِي حِينَ تَخَلَّفْتُ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فِي غَزْوَةِ تَبُوكِ أَنِّي لَمْ أَكُنْ قَطُّ أَقْوَى وَلَا أَيْسَرَ مِنِّي حِينَ تَخَلَّفْتُ عَنْهُ فِي تِلْكَ الْغَزْوَةِ والله ما جمعت قبلها راحلتين قط حتى جمعتهما في تلك الغزوة ولم يكن رسول الله ولم يكن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يريد غزوة إلا ورى بغيرها حتى كانت تلك الغزوة فغزاها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في حرب شديد واستقبل سفرا بعيدا ومفازا واستقبل عددا كثيرا فجلى للمسلمين أمرهم ليتأهبوا أهبة غزوتهم فأخبرهم بوجههم الذي يريد والمسلمون مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كثير okay. So he says that this is the account of my staying behind during the battle of Tabuk Firstly, I never had better means and more favor favorable circumstances than at the time of this expedition. And by Allah, I never possessed two riding camels as I did during the time of this expedition. So firstly, he makes it clear, no excuses. Remember for Toba, you can't make excuses why you did it. You have to regret and don't make excuses and say, I did it because... I was forced to do it. I didn't have any other option. Uh, he says straight, I did, there was no time during my life that I had two camels. So sometimes you have one car, but the car isn't working properly. You're not sure. My send for servicing, all this thing. So I didn't have one camel. I had two camels. I had no excuses, zero excuses. And before that in my life, I never ever owned two camels. So I had no excuses whatsoever. Then, Whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam decided to go on a campaign, he would not disclose his real destination till the last moment of the departure. So when it was Badr, Uhud, and nearby, because there were a lot of spies around, the munafiqin, all these things, uh, he would say, okay, tomorrow we're going somewhere, get ready. And then he would set off towards the east. When they leave Medina, they will stop for a while and then they turn, they go to the west. Okay, this all uh, the strategy of war and all these kind of things, uh, the the commander cannot let 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 it be known before. But for Tabuk, because it was such a long destination, Tabuk over 600 kilometers, uh, he disclosed it before. He said that we are going to Tabuk and it's going to be a long journey. Get ready, be prepared. Tabuk 600 kilometers. Can you imagine how far is it? Now, if you want to go. What is 600 kilometers? If you go KL also, it's only 300 plus, right? 300, so to KL and back, so double, further up. So that will take weeks of traveling. Secondly, it was the season, what season was it? Fi Harrin Shadeed. فَغَزَاهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فِي Harrin Shadeed. This expedition, he set out in extremely hot weather. Okay, in the desert, you have to be prepared. Now you can stop anywhere, you can food, you can have a five-course meal on the way, and uh, you can even shower, and and uh, even in a plane now, you can shower, you have a uh, five-class uh, five class journey. But there, it's in a desert, there's no water, you have to prepare, uh, prepare, well prepared before you set out. It was extremely hot weather, the journey was long, and the terrain was a waterless desert. And then also they had to face a strong army. The numbers, previously they were overwhelmed by the, by the numbers of the, of the Romans. 
now they had to get every single man, every man counted, and it was uh, a tough task ahead. So Rasulullah Wasallam informed the Muslims about the actual position so that they should make full preparation for the campaign. وَالْمُسْلِمُونَ مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ كَثِيرٌ لَا يَجْمَعُهُمْ كِتَابٌ حَافِظٌ يُرِيدُ بِذَلِكَ الدِّيوَانِ And the Muslims who accompanied Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the time were in large number, but no proper record of them was maintained. Okay, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those that accompanied him, he says there's so many that if you would stay behind, you might not have been noticed. That's what he's trying to say. That no, uh, they, they were not, a proper record was not maintained. The actual words that their names would not were not in a book, there was no register of all the names. So a, a large number and uh, he would not be detected. That's what he thought. قَالَ كَعْبٌ فَقَلَّ رَجُلٌ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَتَغَيَّبْ إِلَّا ظَنَّ أَنَّ ذَلِكَ سَيُخْفَى بِهِ مَا لَمْ يُنْزَلْ فِيهِ وَحْيٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ so there were few people who chose to, who believed that they would remain absent, believing that they could easily hide themselves and remain undetected unless revelation from Allah was revealed. So there's no way that you could tell who was there and who wasn't there. وَغَزَى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ تِلْكَ الْغَزْوَةِ حين طابت الثمار والظلال فأنا إليها أصعر فتجهز رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم والمسلمون معه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم set out on this expedition when the fruit were ripe and the shade was sought so it was in the summer in, in, in a severe heat and at that time it was the time when the, 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 the fruit was getting ripe on the trees. Okay, So for those who are farmers, those who have gardens at home, even you wait for the flower, you say, oh, the flower is about to bloom. So imagine the flower, you're watering it the whole year, then you go for holiday, you come back, say, oh, the flower already bloomed and came. Now you missed the flower out. So they go, the, the tree is not yet ready, about to get ripe. The fruit about to get ripe. Once you go, you, you, you're going to be away for a month, you come back, you lost the, the fruits from your trees. So that was the time of the year. So it shows double sacrifice which those that had to leave had to make. فَتَجَهَّزَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَالْمُسْلِمُونَ مَعَهُ وَتَفِقْتُ أَغْدُوا لِكَيْ أَتَجَهَّزُوا مَعَهُ فَأَرْجِعُوا وَلَمْ أَقْضِ شَيْئًا وَأَقُولُ فِي نَفْسِي أَنَا قَادِرٌ عَلَى ذَلِكَ إِذَا أَرَدْتُ So the, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Muslims made their preparations, they started preparing. For this, as mentioned, Rasulullah required every man, everything. So this was the incident where uh, we know the famous story of Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu an. Rasulullah said that whoever has anything, bring it. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an said on that day, today I will beat Abu Bakr. I have a lot, I will bring half of whatever I have. So he brought a big whatever he had a bundle, and he presented it to Rasulullah Sallallahu Abu Bakr also brought, and he, he put his donations, uh, they gathered it together, and Rasulullah Sallallahu seen that said, Oh Umar, what have you left for your family? So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi also concerned about the family, not that you, you put your family in danger. So Rasulullah Sallallahu asked Umar, what have you left? Umar said, I have left half of what is here. When he asked Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr said, Allah and his messenger. So in other words, he said, I brought everything. 
So Umar radiallahu an on hearing that said, I will never beat Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is on the next level. So even though Abu Bakr radiallahu an left nothing for his family, he knew that their yaqeen and their conviction and they had the level that they would be able to survive. Uh, and it was also on this time when Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu an donated, he, his caravan was about to leave for business. So he had camels loaded with goods and he donated all that to, to, towards the battle. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Oh Allah, I am pleased with Uthman, you be pleased with him. And other Sahaba, they did whatever they could. Some of them brought a few dates. Some of them went to look for a job. So they worked, they had nothing. When they heard Rasulullah sallallahu is collecting, they said, let me look for some work. So they worked for one day. They got two, uh, two uh, kilograms of dates and they gave it in the, in the path of Allah. And Rasulullah Sallallahu added it to the, to the preparations. And of course, the munafiqin made fun of them and said, oh, you bring in dates. You think they need your one kilo of dates. Uh, take your dates. Uh, give some armor, give some swords, give some camels. So this was the condition with the Muslims. All the Muslims were making their preparations and I, I would also start to make the preparations along with them. When you, before you go on a long journey, now you book your tickets, you see what, you, what clothes you need to wear, you check the weather, the, the weather forecast, how, what's the weather going to be in that city. Okay, you start packing your bags a few weeks before. So I also started making the preparations, not seriously, but I said, I have two camels now. When they leave, I'll just get on and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to leave. So he said, I would go out in the morning and say, okay, today, today I'm going to pack my bags. But then at night I would come and say, okay, like, tomorrow, tomorrow, we still have time. I'm ready. I just need to put one few things in my, my luggage and I'm ready to go. Uh, he says, I went on postponing my preparations till the time of departure came and it was the morning that Rasulullah set out along with the Muslims. But I had made no preparations. فَلَمْ يَزَلْ يَتَمَادَ بِي حَتَّى اسْتَمَرَّ النَّاسُ بِالْجِدِّ فأصبح رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم غاديا والمسلمون معه ولم أقض من جهازي شيئا ثم غدوت فرجعت ولم أقض شيئا فلم يزل يتمادى بي حتى أسرع وتفارط الغزو فهممت أن أرتحل فأدركهم فيا ليتني فعلت ثم لم يقدر ذلك لي So until the very morning when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left, at, till that time I was still fooling myself. I said, I'm ready, I just need to put something and then I will catch up with them. And I would go out in the morning and I would come back home and I would say, maybe tomorrow I can catch up. My camel is very fast. They're a big group. When, when you travel, in a big group you travel slower. Uh, the, the same with what they say, that if you want to go far, go together. If you want to go fast, go alone. So he said, I'm alone. I can just, I can catch them up day, one day ahead. I'll catch them up later, don't worry. So after one day I said, okay, I'll catch them up. The next day I said the same thing. Until I went on doing so, until the Muslims had covered a good deal of, of distance. And then I wished to march and join them. Would that I done that? Would that I done that? Ya laytani fa'al to say how I wish I had done that. That those that was the last chance that I had. Okay, what was to follow was a very big test. So it kept so it shows procrastination. Sometimes we, we leave something off until the last minute. That's not a, a good thing to do. When you get the time to do it, do it. Because you don't know what, what, what will happen in the future. 
So once they were out of out of uh, out of sight, there was no hope for me catching up with them. Then I was stuck in Medina. Now I started to worry. Okay, so this is the first part of the story. How he got left behind. His intention was to join, procrastinated. At the end, he couldn't catch up and he had no good excuse because he had two camels and uh, there was nothing else that was holding him back. But there was still hope because he mentioned that there was such a big group, Rasulullah might not have uh, noticed exactly who was there and who was absent. So he says, after the, the departure of Rasulullah I went out and whenever I went out, I was grieved to find no good example to follow, but confirmed hypocrites or weak people whom Allah had exempted from marching forth in jihad. فَطَفِقْتُ إِذَا خَرَجْتُ فِي النَّاسِ بَعْدَ خُرُوجِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يُحْزِنُنِي أَنِّي أَرَى لِي أُسْوَةِ إِلَّا رَجُلًا مَغْمُوصًا عَلَيْهِ فِي النِّفَاقِ أَوْ رَجُلًا مِمَّنْ عَدَرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مِنْ أُسْوَةِ إِلَّا رَجُلًا مَغْمُومًا فِي النِّفَاقِ أَوْ رَجُلًا مِمَّنْ عَدَرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مِنْ الضُّعَفَاءِ When I left, all the Muslims now, most of them had left. I went out looking, like sometimes you go out, you miss the bus, then you look and see, oh, your friend is there also, okay, we both we laid together. Okay, maybe you feel that you give yourself consoling to yourself, a bit of consolation. But he says, when I went out in the streets of Medina, I only saw those that were open hypocrites, munafiqin, or those who were excused. Uh, so those that maybe they, they did not have any uh, any ride, any camels to ride on, those, were, those people were excused. People that were injured, old people. So only those who had valid excuses. And I couldn't see anybody uh, that, that I would take some, at least some consolation. So now during the whole trip now, even double headache, now you, you stress and you worry that there's nobody else with me. Beside the open munafiqin. Now what happened in, in Tabuk? وَلَمْ يَذْكُرْنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ حَتَّى بَلَغَ تَبُوكَ فَقَالَ وَهُوَ جَالِسٌ فِي الْقَوْمِ بِتَبُوكَ مَا فَعَلَ كَعْبُ بْنُ مَالِكْ So Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم made no mention of me until he reached Tabuk. And while he was sitting at Tabuk, he said, what happened to Ka'ab bin Malik? So this is another great example of a true leader. He looks out for each one of his followers. So even though it's such a great hito, then Rasulullah wouldn't notice. But Rasulullah noticed. And when they reached Tabuk, Rasulullah sallallahu inquired about him. What happened to Ka'ab bin Malik? So it shows he was a, a good sahabi, he was not a munafiq. And uh, Rasulullah sallallahu even mentioned him and asked what happened to him. فَقَالَ, فقال رَجُلٌ مِنْ بَنِي, سل... من بني سَلِمَةِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ حَبَسَهُ بُرْدَاهِ وَالنَّظَرُ فِي عِقْفَيْهِ فقال له معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه بئس ما قلت والله يا رسول الله ما علمنا عليه إلا خيرا فسكت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم So when Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم asked that a man from the Banu Salam, Salima tribe said O oh Messenger of Allah the beauty of his cloak, his two shawls, Burdun is shawl, Burda, Qasira Burda, the poem of the shawl. So Burda is a shawl. So this man said from the Banu Salama, he said, Oh Rasulullah, I think it's his fine clothes. And he is sitting and he is 
uh, admiring him himself in his in his clothes. So sometimes when you have nice clothes, take a selfie, upload. Oh, see, I have a new shirt. Outfit of the day. So you say he's admiring himself in his clothes. So here we are in the battlefield in our armor. He must be sitting and admiring himself in his clothes. At, uh, uh, at this, Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu an says he, he admonished him, and Mu'ad radiallahu an defended Kaab bin Malik and said, "Oh Rasulullah, we know nothing about about Kaab but good. So Kaab is a good man. He will never stay behind for no excuse. There must be uh, a, he must be having a good excuse because he is not a munafik. He won't remain behind for that for that reason." So here also we learn that defend the, the honor of your brother. If someone is talking bad about your brother, defend him. Don't just sit quietly. But the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam kept quiet. Fasakata Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Fabaina huwa dalik raa rajulan mubiyadan yazulu bihi sarab. Fakal Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. كن أبا خيثمة فإذا هو فإذا أبو خيثمة الأنصاري وهو الذي تصدق بصاع التمر حين لمزه المنافقون. Then while they were sitting at that time in that in that majlis, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم in the distance saw a person coming who was dressed in white. So they could not see clearly the details. They could see oh someone is coming. Then Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم from the distance said, "That is B Abu Khaytama." And when he came closer, they saw it was Abu Khaytama al Ansari. Why he mentions Abu Khaytama al Ansari? Because Abu Khaytama was the person who had contributed one saw of dates. Saw was the measurement of dates, and he was ridiculed by the hypocrites. Saw one saw is. It's like two and a half kilograms, the equivalent of saw. So at that time, dates was was uh, was not sold by weight; it was sold by measure. Measure. So some things now you still sell by measure. Uh, what? Like if you buy if you buy rice, or you go to the shop, the chicken rice shop, they take one bowl, they give you one bowl of rice. So they don't measure and weigh how much, how many kilograms. This is the measure. So the saw was a measure. It was a standard measure that if you buy one saw of this, it's one scoop. Okay, and say say scoop or cup, one cup. Uh, so Abu Khaytama was the person who who worked, and uh, he he got two saw of this, and he contributed one saw. And when he contributed, the munafiqin were ridiculing him and mocking him, making fun of him. قال كعب فلما بلغني أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد توجه قافلا من تبوك حضرني بثي فتفقت أتذكر الكذب وأقول بما أخرج من سقطه غدا وأستعين على ذلك بكل ذي رأي من أهلي. Okay, whatever happened at Tabuk. The Mus- there was no battle there. When the Romans heard that the Muslims coming with a big army, they retreated. So the Sahaba, but on the way there, there was a lot of difficulty which which they faced. Uh, there was shortage of water and uh, many other trials along the way. So the Sahaba coming back. So Kaab radiallahu anhu says, when the news reached me that. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was back from Tabuk. I was greatly distressed. Now is the time to answer. And I thought of fabricating an excuse, and I asked myself how I would save myself from his anger the next day. In this connection, I sought the counsel of every prudent member of my family. So now he's thinking of an excuse. It's still weeks now. The, the still a few weeks before Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam reaches 
what can what excuse can I give to save myself? And remember, he was also sha'ir, poet. So he was good with words. If he could have made an excuse, he would. He could have easily made an excuse. And not only did he uh, think himself, but he also started asking members of his family that what what do you think? What can I say? But فَلَمَّا قِيلْ إِنَّ رَسُولُ إِنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَدْ أَضَلَّ قَادِمًا زَاحَ عَنِّ الْبَاطِلِ حَتَّى عَرَفْتُ أَنِّي لَمْ أَنْجُ مِنْهُ بِشَيْءٍ أَبَدًا فَأَجْمَعْتُ صِدْقَهُ But this, this were a few weeks preceding the arrival of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. When Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم was about to arrive, all the wicked ideas, all the, the evil thoughts vanished from my mind. All those excuses which I was planning and on saying and planning on giving, all of those gone. Why? I came to the conclusion that nothing but the truth could save me. So he knew that if he lied, there would be revelation, there would be wahyu which would be revealed. فَأَجْمَعَةُ سِدْقَ I decided to tell the truth. Nothing but the truth could save me. فَأَصْبَحَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَادِمًا وَكَانَ إِذَا قَدِمَ مِنْ سَفَرٍ بَدَأَ بِالْمَسْجِدِ فَرَكَعَ فِيهِ رَكْعَتَيْنِ ثُمَّ جَلَسَ لِلنَّاسِ it was the morning that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam arrived in Medina, and it was the habit that whenever he came back from a journey, he would first go to the masjid and perform two rakat of prayer. Then he would sit with the people. Okay, so another sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when returning from a journey, he would start with the masjid and start with the affairs of the people before he returned home. Okay, nowadays they say that if you cannot, if you cannot uh, start with the masjid, at least give them a message that you are coming back. Especially if you're gone for a long time, so, so they have time to prepare before you, before you reach back home. So this is the sunnah of Rasulullah Whenever coming back from journey, start at the masjid and to rakaat of salah. Then he would sit with the people for a while. So when he said with the people, those who remained behind came and started to put the excuses and take oaths before him. And there were more than 80 in number. فَلَمَّا فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ جَاءَهُ الْمُخَلَّفُونَ يَعْتَذِرُونَ إِلَيْهِ وَيَحْلِفُونَ لَهُ وَكَانَ بِضْعًا وَثَمَانِينَ رَجُلًا فَقَبِلَ مِنْهُمْ عَلَانِيَتَهُمْ وَبَايَعَهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمْ وَوَكَّلَ سَرَائِرَهُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى حَتَّى جِئْتُهُمْ Okay, so there were more than 80 people who came down and uh, began to make the excuses. These were the munafiqin. When they came, he says, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted the excuses on the very face of them, accepted their allegiance and sought forgiveness for them, and he left the insights to Allah until I appeared before him. So the munafiqin came and said, Oh Rasulullah, I was very busy. Okay, never mind, no problem. May Allah forgive you. Next person came, uh, My son was sick. No problem, may Allah forgive you. Next person came, I didn't have enough money to join. Sorry, I couldn't join. No problem, may Allah forgive you. More than 80 people came like that, munafiqin. Uh, so Rasulullah sallallahu accepted the excuses on face well. He didn't judge them and say that uh, no and uh, uh, find fault with their excuses. And he sought forgiveness for them. He said the verse was revealed, إِسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ أَوْ لَا تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ إِن تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ سَبْعِينَ مَرَّةً فَلَيْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ That whether you seek forgiveness for them, or you do not seek forgiveness for, on their behalf, 
if you seek forgiveness on behalf of the munafiqin, 70 times Allah will not forgive them. So Rasulullah SAW was rahmatul lil alamin. He forgave everyone. But Allah, between Allah and the sin, Allah says that the, that the forgiveness is not there. Uh, because the, the sin of nifaq is the greatest of all sins. They were in secrecy, they planning to kill Rasulullah SAW openly, they pretending to be for the Muslims. That's why the lowest level of Jahannam is for the munafiqeen. Those, these are the true munafiqeen. Okay. Sometimes we say hypocrites, uh, not true hypocrites, but those that possess some of the qualities of a hypocrite. So we say like Ayatul Munafiqi Thalath, Iza Haddatha Kadaba, Wa Iza Wa'ada Akhlafa, Wa Iza Tumina Khana. The sign of a Munafiq, there's three signs. When he talks, he lies. When he promises something, he breaks his promise. And Wa Iza Tumina Khana, when he's entrusted with something, he breaks the trust. So if a true believer does it, that doesn't mean that he's a hypocrite and he will be in the lowest part of Jahannam. It means he has a quality of a hypocrite. But the true hypocrites, those are the ones that will be the lowest levels of Jahannam. Those are the true traitors. Inna al-munafiqina fi darkil asfali min al They were in the lowest level of Jahannam. So everyone came with their excuses. And you can imagine everyone that there's a long queue, everyone's coming, okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay, go, okay, never mind, never mind. Until I came. Fajitu Amshi. Falamma sallamtu tabassama tabassum al mughdib thumma qal ta'al. فجئت أمشي حتى جلست بين يديه فقال لي ما خلفك ألم تكن, ألم تكن قد ابتعت ظهرك So they all came until it was my turn I greeted him and he smiled But when he smiled it was I could see that there was anger in his smile so that shows the love that Rasulullah Sallallahu had for him. Then he said to me, come forward. I went forward and I sat in front of him. And he said, what kept you back, O Ka'ab? Could you not afford to go in for, could you not afford a ride? Did you not have a, a vehicle? Did you not have, have a camel? Did you not have a ride? So Rasulullah sallallahu knew about his condition. قَالَ قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنِّي وَاللَّهِ لَوْ جَلَسْتُ عِنْدَ غَيْرِكَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا لَرَأَيْتَ أَنِّي سَأَخْرُجُ مِنْ سَخَطِهِ بِعُذْرٍ وَلَقَدْ أُعْطِيتُ جَدَلًا وَلَكِنَّنِي وَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ عَلِمْتُ لَإِنْ حَدَّثْتُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيثَ كَذِبٍ تَرْضَى بِهِ لَيُوشِكَنَّ اللَّهُ بِسَخَطِكَ عَلَيَّ وَإِنْ حَدَّثْتُكَ حَدِيثَ صِدْقٍ تَجْدُ عَلَيَّ فِيهِ إِنِّي لَأَرْجُو فِيهِ عُقْبَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَاللَّهِ مَا كَانَ لِي مِنْ عُذْرٍ وَاللَّهِ مَا كُنْتُ قَدْتُ أَقْوَى وَلَا أَيْسَرَ مِنِّي حِينَ تَقَلَّفْتُ عَنْكَ So Ka'ab رضي الله عنه says that, O Messenger of Allah, I swear by Allah, Wallahi, if I were to sit before anybody else, any other man in this world, I would definitely save myself from his anger with one excuse or another. وَلَقَدْ أُعْطِيتُ jadala, And I have been gifted a skill in argumentation. I some people are good in arguing. No matter what you say, even, even if they're wrong, they can argue in such a way that you have to say, okay, you're right. I, I, I have gifted in arguments. I know how to talk. He's a poet, so he knows he, has, he was good in his words. But by Allah, I am fully aware that if I were to put forward before you a lame excuse to please you, 
Allah will definitely provoke your wrath upon me. In case I speak the truth, you may be angry with me, but I hope that Allah would be pleased with me and accept my repentance. So here he is. This is his true repentance and true tawbah. That no matter the consequences, that I know I can lie to you, but Allah will reveal something and then you will be, I will be from the monafi thing forever. I'm, I'm doomed forever. But if I speak the truth now, I'll tell you the truth. I know you'll be angry at me now, but I, at least Allah will be happy with me and in the future you will forgive me. Wallahi ma kana li min uthrin. By Allah, I do not have any valid excuse. Wallahi, by Allah, I never possessed so good means and I never had such favorable conditions for me as when I stayed behind. So no excuses, nothing whatsoever. No health excuses, no wealth excuses, nothing. I fully accept the consequences. So thereupon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Amma hadha faqad sadaq. Faqum hatta yaqdi Allahu feek. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he heard this, he said, this man has spoken the truth. So get up and wait until Allah gives a decision about you. For the others, never mind, go, forgive. Allah forgive you, never mind. When he came to him, this man has spoken the truth. Okay, you wait, Allah will make your decision and Allah will reveal something uh, with regards to you because you did not have any excuse. This, and this is the this is the ruling. A judge has to make such a ruling. Somebody can't come in front of him and say, I'm guilty and say, okay, you're forgiven. Say, okay, we will decide your fate. Allah will decide your fate. That's what Rasulullah answered him. فَلَمَّا تَخَلَّفْتُ وَسَارَ رِجَالٌ مِّن بَنِي سَلِمَةٍ فَاتَّبِعُونِي فَقَالُوا لِي وَاللَّهِ مَا عَلِمْ مَا عَلِمْنَاكَ أَذْنَبْتَ ذَنْبًا قَبْلَ هَذَا لَقَدْ عَجِزْتَ فِي أَلَّا يَكُونَ أَعْتَذَرْتَ إِلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِمَا اعْتَذَرَ إِلَيْهِ الْمُخَلَّفُونَ فَقَدْ كَانَ كَافِيكَ ذَنْبُكَ اسْتِغْفَارُ رَسُولِ كافيك ذنبك استغفار رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لك. The people from my family, the people from my tribe came to me after this and said that you did not do anything wrong before this. You have not committed a sin before this. So you don't have a criminal record. People know that you are a good sahabi, you are a good man, you're not a munafiq. However, you should have gave an excuse to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam like the others who stayed behind and if rasulullah sallallahu sought forgiveness on your behalf that would have been enough for you in other words you have you could you could have hid behind a, a, an excuse rasulullah sallallahu forgive you no consequences nothing Be, before this we know you're innocent it's just that uh, you should you should not have uh, admitted your guilt before the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, فَوَاللَّهِ مَا زَالُوا يُؤَنِّبُونَنِي حَتَّى أَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَرْجِعِ إِلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَاللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَأَكْذِبُ نَفْسِي ثُمَّ قُلْتُ لَهُمْ هَلْ لَقِيَ هَذَا مَعِي مِنْ أَحَدٍ And by Allah, these people kept on reproaching me until I thought of going back to Rasulullah sallallahu and retracting my confession. So it, they kept on saying, why? you so silly. You could have made an excuse. Make an excuse. Go make an excuse. See, I was thinking, they disturbing me so much. Go make an excuse. See, maybe it's better I, I just go back and make an excuse. Then I would be forgiven and that would be the end of the story. But he did not do that. I said to them, has anyone else met the same fate? Anyone else spoke the truth and Rasulullah sallallahu said, wait, hold on. فَقَالُوا نَعَمْ 
لقيه معك رجلان قالا مثل ما قلت وقيل لهما مثل ما قيل لك says yes two other people uh, have met the same fate they gave this they they said the same thing which you said they said they do not have any excuse and rasulullah sallallahu said the same thing to them gave them the same answer قال قلت من هما اي اس هو هو دوز تو بيبل قالوا مراره بن ربيع العمري وهلال بن اميه الواقفي so these are the two wa murara bin rabi' and hilal bin umayyah so when they mention these two people who uh, who took part in badr there was some consolation there was some example for me in them example means that i was a bit consoled that i was not the only one who who was left behind because those who took part in badr they have a certain rank they are all guaranteed jannah guaranteed forgiveness of allah so when i heard that famadaytu hina dhakaruhuma dhakaruhuma li fadhakaru li rajulayn salihayn qad shahida badran fihima uswa قال فما ضيت حين ذكروهما لي when they mentioned these two pious people were taken part in the in the battle of badr i was kind of consoled and i was confirmed in my original resolve that i will stick to the truth i will not make any excuse okay we are running out of time do a few more lines Okay, what happened? It's not only that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Go and Allah will uh, judge you." Rasul wa naha Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam an kalamina ayyuh al-thalatha min min bayni man taqallaf anhu. Qal fajtanabn al-nas, aw qal taghiyru lana. حتى تنكرت لي نفسي في الارض فما هي بالارض التي اعرف فلبثنا على ذلك 50 ليله so after that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited the muslims to talk to the three of us wadi ka'b bin malik murara bin rabi and hilal bin umayya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said nobody is allowed to talk to these three who had stayed behind and the people began to avoid us and the attitude towards us seemed uh, changed suddenly everyone is strangers it seemed to us as the whole atmosphere had turned against us and it was in fact the same atmosphere that i was fully aware and which i had lived for a fairly long time how long was this we spent 15 nights in this state and my two friends confined themselves in their houses and spent most of their time weeping so for 15 nights this was part of their tauba nobody was allowed to talk to them and when they went out it seemed as if they were in a strange land when you go out normally you see your neighbor oh hi talking to everybody greeting everybody but now you go out the neighbor turns his face away said the lift he turn away nobody is talking to you you feel like a stranger even though in your own block so this say i've been living there for so long suddenly it seems as if it is a strange place okay next week inshallah we continue the story of uh, ka'b bin malik Okay, so for 50 days no one was allowed to talk to them from this uh, they mentioned the permissibility of not talking to your brother for more than 3 days if it is due to uh, some sin which he committed so if it is for a worldly thing somebody made you angry you don't talk to them maximum 3 days you cannot talk to them but if it is for 
a religious matter and you do not talk to a person so that they may correct themselves, then you are allowed not to talk to them for more than three days uh, from this hadith. They do not talk to them upon the instruction of Rasulullah for khamsina layla for more than 50 days. Okay. So we'll stop here and we continue from here. Remember this place, someone who can remind us next week for the 50 days. Okay. Remember the stop. Put the stop there. That's where we stop. Okay, anybody has any questions? Hmm. So we, we, we let's end the, the stream first and then we do the question. Okay. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and hidayah. Practice upon what we have heard. Billahi tawfiq wal hidayah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah.